That's always good news. Olivia has been our most successful singer internationally. And more than that, she's remained popular both here and overseas, and that's not always easy. In addition to her singing, Olivia has also been successful in movies, starring in the multi-million dollar success Grease with John Travolta, and also in the about-to-be-released Xanadu. Olivia Newton-John today agreed to this interview. Olivia, great to see you again. Thank you. But I'm surprised to be talking with you while you're on strike. I never imagined you as a striker. <laughs> no, well, it's the first time I've ever been on strike, actually. But only uh, as an actress, as, as a member of the Screen Actors Guild, as a singer, I'm, I'm fine. I think That's over all this cable television in America and all the repeats, yes, etc. Yeah, it's really only affecting um, primetime television actors and movies. If I asked you a direct question about Xanadu, even though you're on strike, you'd have to answer it, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, I have to. Just to be polite, you understand. What's Xanadu all about? Um, it's a musical fantasy, and in this movie, I'm supposed to have been a girl in Gene Kelly's life 40 years ago, and now in a young man's life, and I get the two of them together, um, unbeknownst to, to them, and fulfill their dream. Their dreams come true together. Because Gene Kelly, an all-time great, it must have been very exciting to work with him. He was. He's fantastic. Does he dance as well as ever? Yes, he's amazing. And when when the film first um, was offered to him, he said, I refuse to sing or touch a toe. I think that was his precise line. And as the movie progressed and he really got involved in it and he saw that there really was uh, a reason to dance and I think he got you know the old bug back and we did one together. <laughs> Now, what else has changed? The image? Because every interview you've ever done, you get asked about the squeaky clean yeah, no. Doris Day image. Well, I think, you know, that's a nice image. I, I'm not upset by having a nice image. You know, it's better than having a, a bad one. And Girl Next Door has always been a nice one. But, you know, they're, they're talking about my image change right now. I think all that's happening is that I'm getting older and um, more mature and, and my, I'm getting a little more game in things I'll try to do. But From the girl know. next door to the woman next door. That's it, yes. <laughs> what does the image mean, that, that you've never done anything or just never got caught? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Um, I don't know. I, I keep my private life as private as I can and I haven't really got involved in, in drugs and, and uh, I'm not an alcoholic and I suppose the press find that rather boring. Just about a failure, really. Yeah, and no, not one and no divorces either. You know, so really I'm a wipeout. Well, because that's the other thing, marriage. There's been nearly as many stories about oh. your marriage potential yeah. as Prince Charles. You well, it's really be. him and I, that's why. I wondered about yeah. that. Could we? <laughs> Are you a fatalist? Fatalist, um, yeah, I do. I believe in fate quite a lot. So you accept that certain things are going to happen anyway, whether it's success or something I, else? Yeah, I think things, are, I think with me anyway, that a lot of things, if it's meant to happen, it is, and if it isn't, it isn't. And that way, it's a lot easier to accept a lot of things too. But most things that you've had have been successful, so success has to be easy to accept. <laughs> failure, doesn't it? Not everything. I mean, it's taken me... Um, it's taken 15 years, 16 years really, to, to get where I am now. And it's been, I've had my share of failures too. I suppose the last five or six years has been pretty fantastic. But um, Even with your failures, it was all, you know, you, you have setbacks, but the general trend was up. Yeah, it was. I, I, I think I've, someone terrific or something is looking after me, but I've never really um, had any of that terrible feeling of bitterness I've never had any I haven't been ripped off by anybody or had a manager take advantage of me I mean all these movies that depict all these kind of things I haven't yeah. suffered any of them. your book's going to be terrible isn't it yeah no one's going to buy it I have some very penetrating questions to ask yes. you Olivia Deep. do you mind if I take a commercial break first I have to think about this one no you can yeah you can do that okay we'll be back in just a moment with the pen you have been so successful and it always seems to me that you do it so easily almost without trying. But that can't be right, can it? No, I think I I think about this quite a lot, you know, and people who have been very successful often say, you know, it was a when they were reflecting back it was a terrible struggle and the heartache they went through and the terrible times they went through. I don't really feel I've had any of that. I think I've been extremely fortunate and I have worked very hard. I'm not saying I've just sat here and it's happened to me. I've I'm um I work very hard at it. 
I'm a pretty sensible kind of person. I realize that it won't go on forever, and so therefore I have to develop other areas in my life that will occupy me when it isn't going to happen. But I also have decided that I want to bow, bow out gracefully. I don't want to be um, an aging pop star who isn't quite making it anymore. Yeah. Lots of people say that, sportsmen, mm-hmm. performers, but most of them really don't know when that time is, do they? No. Well, I think you... You have to be smart and you have to hope that the people around you will tell you and yeah. you'll listen. <laughs> but if, they, if their success depends on your success, they're in the same position of not quite knowing when to call it quits. Yeah, true. But I, I, think, I've, I, think, I, have, um, I think I have the intelligence to know when. At least I hope so. I like you really anyway. do seem to have more uh, chance of successfully changing gears down if mm. ever you want to and need to because it hasn't gone to your head. You've been, I mean, quite seriously, you've been more level-headed about your success than almost all the people we see in similar situations. Oh, thank you. Well, I I think you have to remember who you are and uh, what you are and not believe the publicity, good or bad. You have to, you know, because the only real person, the only person that's really true to you is yourself, and so you have to maintain inside a high standard of what you're going to do. As long as you can read that honestly. Yeah, Yeah. and you'll be fine. I mean, if you, if I do, I'll give you an example, if I do a concert and everyone comes back and says, terrific show, that was great. If I know that it wasn't good, no one's going to convince me otherwise. I mean, I can feel comfortable that people liked it, but it won't make me feel any better about it. Where does the level head come from? Family upbringing? I guess good Australian background and family. And we produce our share of big heads. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know. I think it must be my family and uh, my background and just the people around me. But I do think Australia is a great starting place for a performer because you don't get immediate recognition and you don't get um, incredible incredible ego boosting. You People here, are, that's what I do like about this country. They're very down to earth and matter of fact and the like they don't you know yeah. there's none of that the leveling baloney process. yeah and it, yeah. you find it difficult a lot of performers I know find that um, it upsets them but I think really it's probably very good for you in the yeah. long run if you can stick to it stick what about the pressure it. of money because you, you know you were reported as having made a lot of money and it seems you have made a lot of money do you find that a pressure it's a nice one. Um, is it always a nice one? You don't find that sometimes you think, oh, wow, this is difficult. Well, it's difficult um, in that pr- you get pressures from the outside, from people, because they believe that you have something to offer them, and therefore this is where all the stories of hangers-on and, and things like this happen, and people writing to you for money, charities and stuff, which I do anyway, but there's the, the pressure of when you don't have any, I suppose it's when you don't have anything, you don't know any different. When you have something, it's that horror of losing it, or it can be that horror if you let it get to you. So I employ people who take care of that side of it, and I try not to let it run my life. Are you careful with money? Um, yes. You said you spent yes. about being scared of losing what you yeah, have. Yeah, I'm pretty careful, but I, you know, I used to be ridiculously careful. Now, you know, I do enjoy myself. <laughs> You're still not a splurger. At times, but not outrageous. Not like a lot of Hollywood people you hear about. <laughs> okay, what, what what else do you need to do? Need to do? In, in terms of ambition. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I'd like to do um, an acting role where I really have to give something more. I mean, I've been in two films, both of which are wonderful films and I enjoyed doing them, but they didn't... I think that I have more to so do. Getting away from the singing, bubbly act and... Yeah, well maybe... You mean really to act? Yeah, I'd like to have a chance at it, but um, I wouldn't go for something unless I really thought I could handle it, but I would like a chance to do something a little more sensitive. Um, and then, of course, I suppose I'd like to have a family one day because that's the one thing as a woman I'd like to fulfill. So... Both of those. The second one's more important than the first one. Yeah. Well, when we talk again in a year or two, maybe you'll have more information <laughs> for us. Libby, well, thanks for talking. Are you sure there's no scandal? Is there any scandal? <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm telling you. Well, you see, your image just will not change. You're, you're stuck with it. Stuck Olivia, it's to talk with you again. Okay, thanks. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Olivia Newton-John, who is not scandalous in any way. <laughs> we'll be back with more in just a moment. <laughs> 